welcome back to Tony Northeastern and this is part two of the fiddle yard and as we follow those tracks going off to the left and there it is all now finished a 10 road fiddle yard and as you can see I've got a few trains in there already and have a closer look Okay, here we are, and as you can see in Road 6 there's a rake of Backman Thompson coaches, and uh, the sixth there, and it's worked out quite well. Um, you know, and by the time you add a locomotive onto this line here, I've still got at least 150 mil before we reach the point. So it shouldn't clash with um, any other traffic going up and down in row number 7. Yes, it's all complete. The track work is anyway. There's still a lot of electrical work to do. Um, it's temporary wired up to the ECOS at the moment. It's like dropper wire city under the baseboard. So let's go and have a look. Okay, as you can see uh, this is the buzz bar and that's the live feed and that's the negative feed and all the dropper wires are now connected except for the feeds to the frogs on the points um, still got to put the point motors in yet these connectors I've been using they're splice connectors they're quite easy you just slide that cable in there I just do this one for a minute and show you what I mean. See, it, it's that type. So what you do, you you clamp it over to this this wire, and then you feed your cable into the top one, and you squeeze that together with a pair of pliers, making sure it's flush, so you get a good connection. Uh, it saves a lot of soldering and it's quite quick and easy to do and then you just put the cover on and that's it, job done the next thing to do is to start fitting the point motors ok the point motors I'm using are these PM ones from Gage Master and uh, I have used these quite often Use them on my old gauge layout um, a while back, many years ago, and uh, they're quite uh, trusted point mower. Right, so I've got four of these in position already two there, one there, and one there. I do follow the diagram that's on there for wiring them up and the only difference being is I add colours to the lines which I'll show you on my drawing that I've got okay this is uh, my drawing of the Gage Master PM1 point motor and it's exactly the same as you get with the instructions but the only things I've added is I've coloured coded the cables um, A being green or brown C being grey or light blue but I've always kept D and E red and blue because them two go to the track one there and there uh, the pink is the common for the frog on the point and the yellow and the red here, or the yellow and red, will go to the switch wire back under the board, baseboard. I'll show you that. Okay, here's one of the point motors underneath the baseboard, and you can see the pink, pink switch wire here, which now connects up to the dropper wire that came down from the frog. Um, as you can see there's two sets of pink wires as there's two point motors side by side and obviously they meet up with their 
black counterparts for the frogs, one to each frog. And the switch wires for the uh, power to the frog are curled up ready for when I do my control panel. Um, none of my point motors are wired up to a control panel at the moment. So every switch at the moment I just have to flick over by hand. Like right, another quick tip. Um, it's always been a problem to line up the shaft of the uh, point motor with that little hole in the actual point. So what I do is get a bit of um, small core wire and place it between between the two tracks there which centralizes the point keeps that little hole in the middle okay the other thing I do is with the actual point motor itself is a little bit of plastic with a tiny hole which keeps the shaft central to the point. See? And then that makes it a lot lot easier to eye up with that hole there when you go under the baseboard. Once the pin is up and it's through the actual point itself, you just pull this out and then it'll either go one way or the other and then we'll just check it and and then we'll just test it, see um, if it works. Okay, that works all right. So that's how you uh, centralise your point motor if you use these type of switches. Okay, now that I've finished the fiddle yard and all the track work is done, um, you're always left with gaps here where you cut the sleepers out. Now there's a couple of things you can do with the sleepers. You can reuse them by trimming off these bits and pieces and even cutting off the chairs off the sleepers and with a little bit of glue um, slide them back under or you could paint the chairs and just leave them lying around your layout like this um, it's just a, a quick tip for today Obviously inside the fiddle yard I won't be putting the sleepers back in because you're not going to see it, not when the next level goes on top. So I'm not going to bother there. But I will put them back in in these areas here at the throat of the fiddle yard. Um, because there'll be a tunnel mouth across these four tracks at some point um, when I get around to doing that but there you go the track works in place some of the point motors are in place and the next thing to do I still got six more point motors to do to finish off this fiddle yard so I think that's all from me this week hopefully next week we'll start building the control panel Thanks for watching. Bye.